Hello and welcome to Memvic Studio. My name is Angeli Ibesuko. If you're coming across me for the first time, thank you for stopping by and I hope you will subscribe and join the family. Thank you to all my returning viewers for all of your support. I'll be discussing an overview of the education setup, which school your child will attend and how to register them, what happens if you arrive at the middle of the school term, helps available to help your child settle into their new school and education arrangements for a child with special needs. Everything I'll be sharing in this video is based on my own personal experience as well as carrying out some research on the topic and it does not reflect the views of any organized body. Formal education in Scotland for young people starts at when they are about three years of age and this is where they get the government funding to attend what is called early years learning and childcare. It's also popularly known as preschool. So at this age, um, oh, before I, before I go on, I should mention that uh, assessing these funds does not affect your you know, recourse to public funds. So at the moment, the funding that is available is currently for 1,140 hours, and this works out to be about 30 hours a week, only 10 times. Your child can either attend the government early learning and childcare setting, or they can attend a privately owned one, and the government would pay for their hours directly to the owners. And if you need more hours, you can also uh, purchase this through the privately owned ones. So after two years of the ELC, when your child is about five years of age, then they move on to primary school where they would spend seven years. So the primary school here runs from P1, that's primary one, to P7, primary seven. And once they are through with the primary school, then they move on to secondary school. And the secondary school lasts a total of six years, which is split into three. So you've got three years of senior fees and then three years before that. The early learning and child care together with primary school and then the first three years of the secondary school is referred to as a broad general education, um, otherwise known as BGE. So you might hear that thrown around quite a bit. So after the first three years of the secondary school, your child then moves on to the senior phase where, like I mentioned, they would spend an additional three years. Now, it's when they are in this senior phase that they start taking at, um, external exams, the National 5, higher and advanced higher. From S4, students will be able to choose the subjects they would want to um, sit for these uh, SQ exams in. Some students might be able to secure a university or college admission with their National 5 or higher qualification and so may not need to spend the entire three years in the in the um, senior phase of the secondary school. Some people, however, may only be able to achieve only a national five or even lower than that, there is also national four or even national three, but those are internally assessed. So some students may only be able to achieve the nationals even at the end of their three year stay in the senior phase. So it really depends on the ability of the student and what they can cope with. It's typical for a lot of students to leave secondary school at the end of their fifth year to take up a place in the university or college like I mentioned, but also to take up apprenticeship or even to take up some job. So normally because there is a record of every child that is living here, when it's coming to time for your child to start preschool, you would get, uh, the parents would get an email which would uh, uh, provide them with a form and details on how to register their child and pick out a preschool for their child. This process is also repeated when the child is about to get into um, primary school and as well as when they are about to get into secondary school. So you will get contacted and you'll be asked to pick out a school and register your child for the for the school. So if you've just come into the country, then you would need to seek out this registration form and also uh, apply it for your child to go to a particular school. And normally you would find a form in your council uh, website. Generally, pupils are placed in schools within their catchment area, which basically means that every house or every neighborhood has a school which pupils who live around there, they would normally go to. Each neighborhood also has a catchment faith school, which is normally a Roman Catholic school. If for any reason you do not want your child to attend the school in your catchment area, you can apply for them to go to any other school of your choice and if the school has any space, then they might admit your child. Every child is legally entitled to an education irrespective of their immigration status. And every child under the age of 16 is legally required to be in school. So as soon as you arrive, you should seek out the registration form and then apply for your child to actually get into school, even if it's right at the middle of the school term or right at the middle of the school year. 
The education staff are trained to take into consideration the individual needs of their pupils. So your child's teachers and the school as a whole will do all they can to support your child in their learning. Most cases, the school would assign a body to your child who would help them navigate their way around the school. So for um, primary school students, really young primary school students, say like um, primary one, their body might be a child who is in the upper primary school, maybe like primary six or even seven, who would uh, help them navigate around the school and maybe show them places around the school like the toilet and things like that. Just basically help them settle in. And for secondary school students, the body would normally be someone who is uh, in the same class as your child who would also help them navigate around the school. I know in countries like, for example, Nigeria, I mean, as at the time when I was a student in Nigeria, it's probably changed, but um, the secondary students in Nigeria, they stay in the class and the teachers come in to teach them in the class. And it's not the same here. So here it works almost like the university. There are departments and the students move around throughout the school day across departments to take lessons. So your child's secondary school body would help them at least find their classes and find their way around the school. And some students end up forming really good friendship with their body. If your child has additional needs, I would say still follow the same process as if you were registering any other child, but then make sure you make it known all the requirements, all the, all the child needs or everything that apply to them medical wise. Make sure the school knows this. Scotland operates comprehensive school system, which basically means that every child is welcomed in any or any school, irrespective of their abilities. When they are in the school, they will be able to work at their own pace within their class, and the teachers are trained to be able to facilitate this. A lot of schools have facilities to cater to the additional support needs of students at various hubs within the school. If it is deemed that a child will not be able to access mainstream education due to their needs, then they might be referred to an appropriate education facility following an assessment. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.